<laughs> right, Fred? Where is it? Where'd it go? Yeah? Where'd it go? Sometimes when we tease Fred, I actually feel kind of guilty. It's the only time you ever hear Fred's voice. He never talks any other time. I mean, he's such a dingbat. It's not really, maybe it's not nice to tease him. But it sure is fun. Get it, Fred. Put it down by him. Now he'll chase. Fred, you're just not very bright. He'll chase this thing for hours. Okay, that's enough. He's always cute when I take the camera when I turn the camera off. Kind of looks like a dragonfly or something. He really doesn't know what it is. It kind of looks like something he'd want to eat. <laughs> He's going to have a little kitty heart attack. But if he doesn't catch it soon, um, I'm afraid it's, it's going to maybe damage Fred forever. Fred. Oh my god, he's going nuts. He's gonna let he's gonna knock your painting off the wall. I think wifey's getting tired now. She's the one controlling the angel. Well, we better quit. We're gonna give him a heart attack. Right now, his little computer is in overload. <laughs> you almost caught it. Keep trying, keep trying. Poor little guy, imagine how... Keep trying. Imagine how unsatisfying that life would be if you were always chasing light, light images on the wall. Never could catch them. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Fred. He's Come on. The angel's gone, flew away. You didn't get to kill any angels today, Freddy. He's still looking. He'll probably sit there for 20 minutes looking. Yep. He's pretty. It's, look, he's looking around to see if it hid somewhere. He doesn't believe in rainbows. No, he doesn't. He, can't see them. he doesn't care about the, the the spectrums, the rainbows on the wall. He likes those angels. All Fred. right. It's about Freddy. time to get back to work and stop all Where'd this go, nonsense. Fred? He's looking everywhere. <laughs> you were such a dodo. Okay, Fred. Time to turn it off now. Well, hello, guys. You know, I wasn't going to show any of the uh, capacitor replacement work, but there are enough little points that come up here and there that I am going to show bits and pieces of it, uh, not only so that you can see some of that work get done, but also because I want you to see those points that come up. So let's get going. And uh, we'll start with replacing a, uh, a cathode bias resistor on the 6L6. That is a, uh, a 50 microfarad, 25 volt capacitor. Okay, guys, I want to show you something. Right now, as you know, I'm working on the electrolytic caps in this Westinghouse. I figure that's the biggest thing. I can clear the most real estate by getting that thing out of there. So I'm working on that. And as we talked about a few minutes ago, um, that thing shows as two 30 microfarad caps. All right, so um, keep that in the back of your mind. I like to use SAM schematics whenever I can because they're usually clearer and easier to read than the originals. This is a SAM schematic, okay? You see, it's pretty easy to use lots of space, you know, for scale, I'll put my finger on it, lots of space, okay? Now, on the same size paper, let's look at the Westinghouse. Here is the Westinghouse. It's a whole different animal because the schematic uh, takes up a lot less of the paper than it does on the SAMs. And you see things are not as clearly printed, a little bit harder to see things, and not as much room to write my notes. So that's why I use the SAM schematic normally. But now, let's take a look real close. Now this is the original Westinghouse schematic, okay? There's the left half of it, or the right half of it. 
and there's the, the left half. Okay, so it goes together something like this. Alright, so take a look at this. Real, you get down here to where the electrolytics are. Of course, this is the rectifier tube. Okay, coming off, um, you have the, the, both of these electrolytics are going to ground, which we know from looking at the can when we pulled it. And uh, then, the, you know, they're going to wind up making B plus up here. Okay, but what I want you to focus on are the values of these two electrolytic caps. 30 and 30, right? Which corresponds to what we see in the radio. Which agrees with the parts list on the SAM schematic. It's number 9, A and B. Okay, so 47 microfarad, 50, I can live with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a little solder out, off of there, right there. I'll put a heat sink on this resistor. Pull that solder out of there and get that piece of wire out. I have not seen Fred or Buster uh, all night. I don't know what they're doing, but they're not bothering me. Um, that's kind of a good thing. Although, I haven't caught anything goofy on video lately. I need to do some of that. Oh, it's nice to work on a chassis that's got some space, let me tell you. Larry, I feel for you, man, with that RCA. I really do. Um, but this, uh, this is a nice little radio here. All right, let me take some of the heat off this resistor. I like to use alligator clips. They work real nice. Here we go. Heat it up a little first and then get it on there and start soaking up the solder when it melts. There you go. Go ahead and get that wire out that you're going after and sometimes it's better get your handy dandy Zuron nippers okay these are the 410 micro cut you want to get these 410 micro cutters okay put a little light on there hope it doesn't mess up the camera too much and uh, you find where that wire is and you clip that puppy off of there and it'll fall right off I hope you all had a good Thanksgiving I did my daughter came home she lives out of state she was home for a few days. That's always a treat. She's more like me than my son is. I love my son to death, but he and I are very different kinds of people. But my daughter is a lot like me. There we go. Okay, that's out of there. Now, while I'm at it, because I like to do a terminal once, and so I'll pull this one out. I'll leave this resistor in. But this little guy right here has got to come out too. And I'll clip that as well. I'll lift them both up and then I'll know where they go. I'll find out if some irreplaceable component that made of unobtainium. This one has been hot. Isn't that curious? And that's coming off the 6L6. It's coming off, uh, it's, it's a 0 .005. It's coming off the plate and going to the cathode. So, yeah, if that thing's leaking, you got problems because that's going to screw up your output. Look at that. That's been hot, man. It's all melted out of here. The paper is kind of dark right here. That's probably hard to see, but all this wax should not be coming out of the end of it. This, is, this has gotten hot. This is probably a really leaky capacitor. So, all right, that's why we do these things. I'm going to put this 47 microfarad right here. Okay, positive goes to this terminal with the resistor, negative to ground on this. Sometimes they're negative, you know, it's like negative bias, like if it's a grid, it's a grid uh, bias. Well, then that'll, that'll be the other way around where positive will go to ground. But this one's coming off the cathode, we're going to do that differently. So let's see, just so, yep, that's a point zero zero five. Take this here, run it through here. Whatever you do, don't try to pull the wire tight by pulling on the, term, the leads of the capacitor, okay? It's very tempting, but you'll pull them right out of the capacitor. It's not made for that. It's not built for that kind of mechanical strain. So I went around one and a half times, and then this is going to go to ground up here. I'm going to worry about that later. I've got a .005 I need to put there. That'll be a .0047. So I'll put one of these in there.
So did you have turkey on Thanksgiving? Um, we don't much care for turkey at my house. So we had a really nice ham. Really nice. But I like turkey gravy. So wifey bought some turkey gravy in a jar, which I know isn't ideal, guys. Don't, don't, don't scream at your computer now. But it worked out pretty good. And, we, you know, she bought some stuffing. The stuffing she bought ready-made at a local grocery store that makes, they have a nice deli and they make good stuff. Those of you that know my situation know that she, she doesn't have as much energy as she used to have. Um, and so we do, we try to find ways to conserve that energy. And cooking is not the most fun for her anymore anyway. So... There you go. Some people love to cook. I hate to cook. I was married to wifey for a whole year before she knew that I knew how to cook. Because I hate to do it. And I did not want her to know. Um, I don't remind her whenever I can, you know, as much as I can avoid it, I don't remind her. When I was going to college, I cooked breakfast, breakfast for those spoiled, rotten, bratty professors for four years, man, every morning. Because I needed to pay for school. And I never want to turn another egg again if I can help it. And, and if their breakfast sandwich or their breakfast was not just right. Oh my gosh. It was awful. Awful. Well. I guess I should stop with that rant. Maybe one of you watching is a professor and you don't want to hear it. Sorry about that. College is overrated. Overrated. We spent the last many years talking about, oh, we got to have all these kids go to college. So now we have a bunch of kids with college degrees. The value of a college degree is diminished now because so many people are getting them and maybe they're not, they're getting easier to get. And nobody does vocation. But I have a niece that is an underwater welder and she makes a hell of a lot more money than I do. And she's just now... Um, reaching her stride in her career. So, um, I don't know, man. Vocations are not a bad thing. It's too bad we don't promote them anymore. I mean, that lady, my niece, can just about set her price. She works at the nuclear power plants and stuff, as well as other things. But, you know, if you know, Larry, you know this. If you know about nuclear power plants, there's usually a containment pool somewhere in the power plant that also is a surge reservoir. It's a place where to absorb surge if there's ever a problem in the reactor and you get a pressure surge, at least in the reactor I dealt with. And uh, if we, we would do inspections and sometimes repairs underwater of that thing because you don't want to remove the water as part of the safety system, so it's got to be there. Not even for a little while you don't want to remove it. And uh, so they would work on, she, you know, she does that kind of work. She also has worked, uh, she lives in Illinois, near Chicago, so she's worked on stuff underwater in Lake Michigan. She's done all kinds of cool things. And like I said, she hasn't been doing it that long. She makes more money than I do, and I've been working a long time. So go figure. So much for that college degree. I shouldn't be squawking. I mean, I'm lucky to have been able to get it. And I'm lucky to have gone to a decent school. I get all that. But the, the, the recent push in the last eight or nine years for every kid to go to college, I think, is, is a damaging thing for the country. There are some kids that just aren't, some people that just aren't wired for college, but they are wired to do other stuff. And we miss out on their value if we tell them that, oh, they'll be more valuable if they go to college. No, you know, let them let them um, figure out what they do well and go focus on that. From what I understand, that is how it works in Germany. And, and if there's anything the Germans do well, it's that kind of thing. I do what Larry does, and I mark my schematic as I go. And I think if you're serious about working on radios, you need to do that too. So I'm going to go ahead and mark on there what I just did. And I'll mark those electrolytics that I did, too. All right, so since I had this one loose, I suppose that's the next place I'll go. I've got a 330-ohm resistor right here. I'll check that and make sure that's right. That's all in the output 
and it all will affect the sound. And if it's within, it's a 5% resistor, and they usually didn't put those there unless there was a reason, so I kind of want this to be close. 5% because it's got a gold band there instead of silver. All right, what did I say? Three, oh, I'm sorry, a three, 33 ohm, because that's a black band, not brown. So it's yellow, yellow, or orange, orange, black, which is 33 times 10 to the 0, which is 33. And I got 32.3, I'm good. Wow, check that out, little tiny choke. I want to be careful of that guy. You see, you see that? Uh, it's just a little coil. It looks like it has about 20 turns. And I don't know if there's a core in it or not, but uh, in any event, I want to be gentle with that puppy. So I'll keep that kind of out of the way there. All I'm after is this capacitor right here. I want to get the other end of that off of there and, and, and solder the new cap in. So I'll cut that out. That's a pretty sorry looking capacitor right there. So I'm going to put a a heat sink on the outside, on the outside of the resistor. That, now that's not going to be nearly as effective, but it will pull, if it gets too hot, it'll pull some of that off, and that's, that's all I really need, I guess. Time to clip some more little uh, solder braid deals. I get them on a spool, of course, and then I clip them about an inch long, and I'll do about 50 or 60 or 80 of them at a time. Get in there. Okay. There you go. Now all I need to do, go ahead and bring this capacitor wire over. Bring it up through. Don't get too, too excited about pulling it too tight. Okay, now it's going to be too long. I'll have to go around two or three times. I don't want that. So I'll clip off some of it. And then you try to keep... Oh, good. It's stuck to the clipper. Try to keep an eye on where the little trimming went. Squeeze that down. And there you go. Now I'm going to give away a secret, guys. I figure... Uh, I'm secure enough in my masculinity that I can tell you this. Uh, you all know that I like British, British television. So I, I, I've been watching a pretty cool series, but I, I got to the end of what I can watch unless I want to buy the series. I was watching it on Amazon Prime. I'll probably buy the series because I like it. Something called Poldark. Pretty cool story. I think it's, it's I know it's fiction, but I think it's modern, it's modern uh, period stuff. But uh, when my daughter was here, we all sat down and we watched the 1995 version of Pride and Prejudice, the one with Colin Firth in it. Now, I know a whole bunch of you He-Men out there are rolling your eyes, and that's okay. I can I can deal with that. I'm used to it because they do that at work. When I worked at the steel mill, man, you don't ever want to let out at a steel mill that you watch Pride and Prejudice. Oh my God, that that will be that reputation will hit the ears of eight thousand people on the mill within a day. Okay, but I don't really care. Okay, so I'm not trying to prove anything. And like I said, I'm secure enough in my masculinity. So we're watching this, and I really enjoy that show. I've uh, probably seen it about 20 times. But again, it's the one with Colin Firth and Jennifer L. And uh, I'm telling you, man, the Brits know how to act. They can act circles around American actors. Um, they, they just, I don't know what it is. I don't know, they got some kind of charisma that American actors just can't get their hands on. But uh, Pride and Prejudice is good. That's a good show. My favorite of that genre... All right, I'm giving away secrets, guys. So, you know, if you can't handle this, turn off the video or go to something where they talk about manly stuff like hunting knives and guns and stuff. So, um, uh, my favorite of that genre is one called North and South. And no, I'm not talking about the stupid one with Patrick Swayze. Indeed not. I'm talking about the British drama that's set in the 1800s at a cotton mill in, in the uh, northern part of England. And... Uh, it's a great show. It's very well acted, very dramatic, uh, beautifully done in terms of historical detail. I mean, nobody, nobody does historical detail like the Brits do. Nobody. Um, I, I, man, I, I wish Americans could do that. I, I really do, because basically most American movies are crap. I told you before that we watched recently 
Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. Man, was that it's the newer one. I think it was made in 2013. It is a phenomenal movie, but you got to pay attention. You can't miss five minutes of that because you're lost if you do. But it's a phenomenal movie. Um, geez, I've seen a lot of good ones. The Gathering Storm. That's one of the rare ones where there are some, there's even, I think, Albert Finney. I'm not sure. I think he's an American. Anyway, he did a great job as Winston Churchill, who happens to be one of my heroes. It has an added benefit, enjoying that kind of movie. You get to spend time with wifey, and she maybe likes you just a little more because you'll watch a chick flick with her. It's not a bad thing. I mean, how many times can you watch Die Hard anyway? We got quite a bit done on this guy. Um, let me mark this off so I don't forget. Let's see, that was a .005 capacitor, and uh, it goes over to pin 3, which is the plate, I believe. Yes, it is. Okay, so I got that done. So I, w I mentioned that this thing was sounding pretty distorted. Well, maybe that, that heated up capacitor was part of that. Okay, what I'm going to do is I proceed the same way as I just did these few capacitors. That's why you sometimes when you're doing the recap part, when I'm doing the recap part, you'll see, because I only have a couple hours a day uh, during the week to do this, you'll, you'll realize, that, you know, you'll wonder why it takes me so long to get, like, over that part of the project, because I do it this way. I, I, I pick one terminal. Everything on that terminal that needs to re be replaced comes off, and then I put that component, the components I removed, I get new ones and I put one end of each each of those new ones back in that terminal and I leave the other end dangling and then I go chase down the other end of all the old components and you know solder the new ones in the same place. Um, it takes a lot of time to do it that way but I don't make very many mistakes and uh, after all time is not the problem. This thing's been sitting around this 1950 right? So this thing's been sitting around for 67 years. I think taking a little more time to do a restore job on it won't hurt it. So there you go. All right, I'm going to turn off the camera, guys, because this can get really boring, and there's only so much yammering about old British movies that I can do. And so uh, when I come back, I'll give you an update of where I am. I'll probably be about halfway done. I'll show you that, and then I'll show you the other half. I'm going to leave these micas alone, but some of these bigger dominoes are actually film capacitors in a plastic package so I have to determine which ones are which based on their value but I'll leave the micas alone uh, I'll test a lot of the resistors these were made in a vintage when they don't actually go bad that often the dog bones are usually bad these carbons have about a 70 percent good as far as my experience goes so I'll check those and if they are all turning out good I won't worry about it okay so uh, let me get started on all that and I'll check back in with you soon all right guys guess what i've been working my tail off and i've pretty much got this thing recapped and um i've got it re-resistored mostly re-resistored there are a few that were good but just i would say about eight out of ten of these resistors i guess that makes it four out of five doesn't it <laughs> i would say four out of five of the resistors that i tested were high and i needed to replace them so there's a bunch of new ones in there let me show you where I am so far and we'll start at one end and work toward the other so let's start with the electrolytics here I've replaced the electrolytics the two main filter capacitors right here okay originally they were 30 microfarads so I put a couple of 33's in there 450 volts this was real easy because they were both in the can and the can was grounded you know the can casing was grounded so it was real easy for me to to see that the negatives on these are grounded they're both 30s so it didn't matter I could mount them up and then go ahead and deal with the wiring I took the wiring off of the, I set the can aside with the wires attached in one terminal at a time I detached the wires and brought them over and put them on terminals here go over here a little bit in the circuit for one of the plates of the converter tube was a four microfarad capacitor to ground and uh, it sits right on the other side of this 18 uh, kilo ohm resistor um, from B plus so B plus comes right over here it goes to this 18 K so it puts a lower voltage it also goes through this 68 K here it puts a lower voltage on plate one than it does on plate plate two because it's drawing plate two before this 68 K 
Um, I replaced both of these resistors. I replaced that capacitor. This one is a high precision capacitor that I have left in place. That's that right there is that, cap that capacitor. Now this thing um, is supposedly rather high precision. Now I'm sure that it's paper and foil inside. If I have any troubles at all, I'll change that thing. But the truth is, the less I mess with some of the tuning stuff, you know, the RF stuff, the happier I think I would be. And uh, that, I think, is bearing out because um, the thing does receive quite well. And it, it is selective and picks up a bunch of stations. Basically, a lot of the, the tuner section is as I found it. Um, I didn't, you know, when I do alignment, I might do some things, but I'm not going to horse with the, the coils for the FM. I'm really not going to mess with much at all on this, I think. I think I'm just going to leave it be. Now we come over here to this midsection of the radio. Okay, and this is where the IFs live. Put a bunch of new resistors, all new capacitors. So there's a lot of new stuff. There are a few resistors that I left alone. Surprisingly... These little quarter watt guys were the ones that were the most dead on every time I tested them. I didn't see the point in replacing them. Very little current goes through these things. But uh, they were really accurate. That, that was kind of strange. I expected those to be way out. But all the half watts and one watt resistors were all high. And I replaced all of them. Take a look right here at, uh, at where the power cord comes in. It's kind of a strange place. It comes in the front of the radio. So I was presented with... Put the fuse on the inside of the chassis and have real short runs to where the power line is. Or put the fuse at the back of the chassis, right? And then and then have a uh, kind of a long distance for right across some of the RF stuff for the power line to be sitting. And I thought that it would make more sense to go ahead and put that fuse right here in the uh, front part of the chassis and put it inside. It's not a hard chassis to get out of the radio, so if the fuse needs to be changed, yes, it'll have to be removed to change it. But then again, that'll also keep people from fiddling with it or putting a bigger fuse in. So if they have a problem the fuse blows, it will almost force someone to look at the radio to see what caused it. I put safety capacitors here for the line filters, okay? A couple of Y2 safety caps. And uh, so the power comes in. Here are the two power um uh, you know wires right here okay so power comes inside of these uh, these these uh, sheathed wires one of one side the uh, the negative side goes right here to this terminal here while well, the neutral goes right here to this terminal here goes off to the transformer the positive comes right here to this terminal on the strip which is not it, it's not connected to ground or connected to anything else of course a small jumper right over the fuse holder, through the fuse, out of the fuse, and over to another terminal on the same terminal strip. And then both of these have capacity, the, the line filters going from, you know, where they're connected at the strip to ground. Right here, this terminal here is ground. All right. So the Y2s are connected to ground. Uh, power comes in, comes in here goes through the fuse and goes to this terminal right here and then goes off to the power switch okay and then of course the other side the return is right here and that goes off to the transformer okay so I think that's gonna work out great and uh, it may not look elegant but it's tidy and it's robust it'll last a long time okay now we get to the detector part of the circuit right here and we got the 6AT6, which is the detector tube, and it's also the AVC tube. And uh, there are some mica capacitors that I left alone. These are real small values. Okay, so um, this one here is uh, looks like three. It look it looks like a hundred picofarad right there. One zero times ten to the one. So that would be it'd be a hundred. Okay. Um, we got some others. They're real. They're all small. I'm going to talk about these mica capacitors in a minute because there are other capacitors that were in the radio that are basically mica capacitor imposters, and I want to talk about that when I get to that point. So just uh, hold your horses for a minute. We'll get right there. There's not much to say about the rectifier. We just uh, basically we left the rectifier pretty well the way it was. There was wasn't really much to change on that. There never is. Um, you just make sure everything is good and clean and and uh, 
Oh, that's very interesting. So this ground wire runs through this pit, this tube right, this pin right here, and it was never soldered. I didn't touch this wire. This was never soldered, so I'll get a real good look at the rectifier on the schemo and see if that should have some solder on there. It might be that that might be a source of noise if that thing is moving around like that. That's interesting. I didn't catch that before. Let's see, what pin is that? That is pin. Let's see, one, two, three, four, pin five. And if I look at pin five, that is a plate. And it is definitely supposed to be grounded. Yep, that is pin 5. I can see the number 5 right there. Okay, this may not be a big deal. That pin 5 on the rectifier tube is not connected to anything. So it really doesn't matter whether it's grounded uh, well or not. There's no pin there. Um, I don't know. I don't think I need to put any solder on that. I don't see the point in doing that. Um, you know... There were there. I have seen radios from the factory that needed solder at different joints, and they were never soldered. So it happens. I saw, I saw a TV like that, and that the TV was an early '50s TV, and it still worked. But uh, I I got it from the original owner, who said it always was a little clunky. Um, they would bang on the side of it right from day one, and it would work, and then it would stop working. They'd bang on the side of it again, and it would work again. So go figure. Okay, so finally we get down to the output section, and this is where the ratio detector is. Again, mica capacitors, real small values, okay. Um, and no, no, it doesn't make sense to change micas out unless you know they're bad, because they're usually pretty good. And so we left those alone. And this one here is, uh, it's like, for example, uh, this is a 222 2 times 10 to the 1. 220 picofarad mica. So, uh, I, you know, I'm, I have some micas. They're expensive, and I'm not going to be gaining anything. In fact, I might be throwing things out a little bit because this might be right where it needs to be. The radio is aligned to it, and if I put in a new one, I've got more aligning to do. So I leave those alone. But all of the, uh, obviously, the paper and wax I replaced with some with these yellow film because they were more convenient to run. And some with these nice Panasonic uh, little chiclets. They work well too. They're all, uh, they're all film capacitors and they, they all work really well. And the 6L6 does have a 50 microfarad 25 volt electrolytic going from, uh, well I think that was pin 8 to ground. And uh, there's, a, there's a shunt resistor in parallel with it that also goes to ground. And it's this guy right here, this, this flexible resistor, this 180 ohm resistor, goes to ground. So um, that's, that's all. Uh, this was good, and I, I, didn't have, I don't have any of this kind. And I thought I'd leave that in there. That's, good. that's a nice resistor. There's a reason they use that, and I'm not sure what that is. We're going to get in and give these pots a squirt as well as giving this band switch a good dousing with, with uh, my deoxid substitute. So we're looking pretty good underneath here. And uh, let me go get that deoxid stuff ready, and we'll mix her up, and then I'll, I'll get started on that part. Okay, guys, I'm ready to try our homebrew contact cleaner. Let me just see how this works. Now, this sprayer is going to be maybe a little too... There's gonna be maybe, it'll maybe spray a little too strongly at first. Yikes, but I'll have to get used to it. Um, let me just see how I can do this. And uh, let's, there's only one way to find out, right? Okay, here goes. It's not too bad. It's not as pinpoint accurate as the deoxy can, but if I get right there, I can get right down in the switch. Get a little bit of runoff that I probably wouldn't get with the axle, but if I learn to control it, which I haven't done yet, um, it might be okay. The trick is going to be getting it inside of potentiometers. I admit that I haven't figured out yet how to do that. But uh, some potentiometers will be easier than others. Boy, this stuff sure does smell, though. So, um, the thing is, I forgot to do this. Open a window or do it outside. I have a big window, and so I can do that. Let me see if this is doing anything.
Smells like winter out there. I can see it cleaning off spots on the on the contacts. You probably can't see it. But if, if you could see down here, I wish you could, because it is definitely cleaning off some, some it's where they're rubbing, it's cleaning off the, that part of the contact. So it's, it's, uh, it's doing the thing, yeah. It looks just like dioxid. So it's working. Now maybe it would work with straight up lacquer thinner, or who knows. But uh, I gotta believe this is, this is doing the trick. Now we'll see when I go to operate this machine how it works then. So I'm going to do it just like the oxid. I operated a whole bunch of times. And then tomorrow we'll see how well this stuff dried off because the oxid takes a while to dry too. Okay, and then when, once you, you work it a little bit, then you just give it a quick little blast. Okay. It sprays more than I'd like. I'm going to use lower pressure from now on. But uh, that's okay. You have to learn somehow, right? Okay, let me just try a blast inside of these pots and see if that's going to do any good. This is going to be hard to do. Well, not so hard as I thought. As long as I have an opening, I can get in there. It does spray a lot of stuff out, though. But it gets it good and wet. And it goes inside. Yep. Oh, hi. Hi, we um, I sent you a note. Oh, and my it phone is in the other room. Ready. Okay, I'll be right up. Let me just do this real quick and I'll be right up. Okay. Okay, so it sounds like my dinner is ready. I need to go upstairs. But I think this is going to work okay. It feels nice and smooth, just like it's supposed to. It feels smoother than it did. And if you can get close to the holes, that helps most of it to get inside. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now let's do this guy here. It's a little messy. We'll have to live with the messy thing. But it sure does, I can feel it working. Another blast. Oh yeah, you can feel it working. Now, of course, I'm going to use more of this than I will deoxid because of that spray can. I'll have to figure that out because I don't want to be wasteful on this. But I think it's just a matter of lowering the pressure. Okay. All right. It's time for me to go eat, guys. So I'm going to let this dry for a bit and just see how I do. So, so far so good, Larry. It's uh, working out well, sir. All righty, guys. What do you say we wrap it up now? Um, we'll let this concoction dry, and next time when we power it up, we'll see how well it worked. So let's close her down. From your Western Outpost in Salt Lake City, this is Michael. That's all for now.